now comes the chapter that many congregations would not like to hear. Let's not be like rebellious people, which say to the seers, See not, and to the prophets, Prophesy not to us right things. Speak to us smooth things, prophesy deceits. Let's listen to what God's minister has to preach to the Corinthians. Could it apply to us too? And I, brethren, couldn't speak to you as to spiritual, but as to carnal, even to babes in Christ. Now those are meaty words for any church to swallow. Are we ready for meat, or can we only handle milk? Spiritual baby food. I've fed you with milk, and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it. Neither yet are you able. Pastors often have to hold back from delivering meatier sermons because the congregation's not yet spiritually mature enough to receive it. That's a judgment call that must be approached with prayer and wisdom, knowing that to preach only smooth things is also not right. Paul certainly cannot be accused of that here. What did he have to say? For you are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, aren't you carnal and walk as men? This church is still fleshly, that is, not yet spiritual. Why? It's because of envying, strife and divisions. What were some of its causes in Corinth? For while one says, I'm of Paul, and another, I'm of Apollos, are you not carnal? Partisanship is frequent in worldly politics, but ought not to be found in churches, except in separating ourselves from heresy. What can we learn from different leadership personalities? Who then is Paul, and who's Apollos, but ministers by whom you believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? Each of our human leaders can teach us different lessons. What are some of the different gifts of our leaders? I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Church planters and waterers of churches often fall into the trap of thinking that growth is by human effort. True spiritual increase in size and maturity comes from heaven. How might Paul summarize many bookshelves filled with worldly-minded church growth techniques? So then neither is he that plants anything, neither is he that waters, but God that gives the increase. What does the Bible say about humility? The Lord mocks the mockers, but is gracious to the humble. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Humility involves working with those over us in the Lord. Are church leaders with different gifts to be united? Now he that plants and he that waters are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. If we welcome those who work for God, we receive the same reward as them. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. What wonderful thing does this mean? For we are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry. You are God's building. When the church welcomes the true ministers of God, we all become laborers together with God. How do we build? According to the grace of God which is given to me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another builds thereon. But let every man take heed how he builds thereon. Those who have gone on before have built our churches. Let's be wise in building upon their work. If we don't build on the foundation laid, we're building an entirely different structure and not the church of God. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. 
Yes, Jesus Christ is our foundation. What are we building on the foundation? Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, do we have a test that our building materials must pass? Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Time and trial will reveal what we build, whether it's good or bad. Are we building what's temporary or eternal? If any man's work abides, which he has built thereon, he'll receive a reward. Biblical orthodoxy, which follows the teachings of Jesus, the prophets, and apostles, are precious metals and true gems. But heresy and worldly apostasy are hay and stubble that will perish in the fire. Which are we building? If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so is by fire. Can a foolish workman be saved? Perhaps so, because we're not saved by perfect theology, but by faith. Apostasy in the church will eventually come to nothing, burned up, but gold, silver, and precious stones will survive. Know you not that you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? What is the temple being built with precious metals and jewelry? It's us. Ye, in the King James Version, is plural. The wood, hay, and stubble are an attempt to build the temporary works of this world on the foundation of Christ. The precious metals are building the temple using the precious materials of heaven on the foundation. If any man defile or destroy the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. To destroy the church, the people of God, is to destroy where God dwells. How do people destroy the church? Through false doctrine and sins. We're tempted because every church is so imperfect, but we must be careful how we treat each other, because God dwells among us. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seems to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. Worldly wisdom calls godly wisdom foolish, but is really empty foolishness. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God, for it's written, he takes the wise in their own craftiness. The best wisdom of the world is, in God's eyes, foolishness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they're vain. The best wisdom of the world is useless and ineffective compared to the wisdom of heaven. Therefore let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. Let's not brag about following great church leaders, for everything belongs to you. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours. We're all partakers together of the benefits of God's kingdom. We even own death because for us to live is Christ and to die is gain. And you are Christ's and Christ is God's. Rather than unbalanced loyalty to one, mature Christians will begin to broaden their faith, tapping great Christian leaders across the spectrum, especially those whose focus is obeying Jesus. Next, Paul will encourage us to love some as spiritual fathers. Yet in concluding this chapter, he reminds us that all faithful teachers point us to Christ, and Jesus points us to the Father.